that parliamentary censorship proves everything you need to know about this and everything else in this government. I asked a question of the member for King's Hands, the chair of the Agriculture Committee who's now studying the painful impacts of the carbon tax, and the front bench here shut him down, told him to sit down and shut up because they had a better mouthpiece for the PMO who would stand and speak in his stead. The opposition. Let's understand that after eight years, this NDP Liberal Prime Minister is not worth the cost. And they're right. Um, according to the Parliamentary Budget Officer, this Prime Minister's carbon tax will cost the average Nova Scotia family $1,500. That's why the Nova Scotia Legislature voted unanimously, wow. Liberals, Conservatives and NDP, to call on federal MPs representing the province to vote with the common sense Conservatives to spike the hike. Will he allow a free vote so Nova Scotians can vote for their constituents rather than the party boss? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, a family of four in Nova Scotia gets about $824 back in the, in the year uh, for the price on pollution. The Canadian carbon rebate uh, delivers more money in the pockets of eight out of ten Canadians right across the country. The Leader of the Opposition wants to take away those Canada carbon rebate checks from Canadian families, where eight out of ten families do better, even price on pollution. It's a way of fighting climate change, of building a safer, more prosperous future, and putting more money back in the pockets of Canadians, something he wants to take away. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The Prime Minister has finally done something helpful when it comes to math. He says that his rebate for Nova Scotians is $850. Well, the Parliamentary Budget Officer confirmed that the cost is $1,500 for the average Nova Scotia family. So he wants to take away $1,500 from the average Nova Scotia family in carbon taxes and give back only $850. Everybody knows that the carbon tax is just like him, not worth the cost. Will he allow a free vote? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, once again, the Leader of the Opposition wants to take away the Canada carbon rebate checks that land in Nova Scotians' mailboxes, but in the pockets of families right across the country where the price on pollution is in place, because 8 out of 10 of them do better with the price on pollution and the Canada carbon rebate than they would. He wants to take away those checks from Canadians, and he wants to do far less to fight against uh, the climate change impacts the Canadians are feeling from coast to coast to coast. No plan for the future, no money for Canadians. Speaker, the tax revolt has spread to Ontario, where now the Liberal leader of the provincial party has flip-flopped and says that she too is against the Prime Minister's carbon tax. Maybe that's because she read the Parliamentary Budget Officer report showing Ontarians will pay $1,674. That's more than $600 more than the rebate in that province. So. Will the Prime Minister allow his Ontario MPs to have a free vote on our common sense conservative motion to spike the hike? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, families in Ontario are facing higher pro prices for groceries, higher costs for rent, and we are delivering a Canada carbon rebate that leaves them exactly. better off. Eight out of ten Canadian families across the country do more money in their pockets with the Canada carbon rebate than the price on pollution costs them. At the same time, the price on pollution is bringing down carbon emissions, preparing a cleaner economy of the future, and putting more money back in Canadians' pockets. The Conservatives want to take away the Canada carbon rebate checks. We're going to continue to support families on affordability and fighting climate change. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Right from the Parliamentary Budget Officer's numbers, he says $1,674 is the cost to the average Ontario family, and the rebate is only $1,047. So Ontarians are paying more than they get back, just like British Columbians, where the NDP government is administering the federally mandated carbon tax. And according to the Vancouver Sun today, 
Uh, the budget presented by the NDP in that province says the carbon tax will raise $9 billion over three years and only pay back $3 billion. Mr. Speaker, that's a net nearly $6 billion net carbon tax cost. Will he allow BC MPs to free votes? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Canadians watching politics and watching this question period, for reporters up in the galley or anyone who wants to see a concrete example of the fact that the leader of the official opposition doesn't care about facts, doesn't care about evidence, doesn't care about how the Federation works. He just wants to make clever arguments to score partisan points. and will continue to be administered by British Columbia, not the federal government. Well done. Lena Deliver. That I have, Chef. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. April Fool's Day carbon tax hike of 23% will hit Nova Scotians especially hard. Uh, the Prime Minister's tax will cost $1,500 for the average Nova Scotia family, far more than they get back in rebates. That's why Nova Scotia's Assembly passed a unanimous motion with all three parties supporting it, calling for federal MPs from that province to vote with Conservatives to spike the heck. One of those MPs is from King's Hance, the chair of the Agriculture Committee, which has been studying the carbon tax pain for farmers. So the question is for the chair of the Agriculture Committee, will he vote with us to spike the hike? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And look, what the honourable member is actually suggesting is false. We have real-world data to demonstrate in provinces where the system actually applies, families receive hundreds of dollars more each year than they pay in fuel charges. The Conservatives pretend to care about affordability, yet they oppose measures to put more money in the pockets of families. They pretend to care about affordability, but they oppose measures that protect seniors' pensions. They pretend to care about affordability, but they vote against measures to remove the interest on Canada student loans. Mr. Speaker, we will do everything we can to make life more affordable, including putting more money in the pockets of families while we fight climate change at the same time. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Well, that parliamentary censorship proves everything you need to know about this and everything else in this government. I asked a question of the member for King's Hands, the chair of the Agriculture Committee, who's now studying the painful impacts of the carbon tax, and the front bench here shut him down, told him to sit down and shut up because they had a better mouthpiece for the PMO who would stand and speak in his stead. Mr. Speaker, the question is for the member for King's Hands, the chair of the Agriculture Committee. His committee studying how the carbon tax hurts farmers. Will he vote to spike the hike? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Honourable Minister for Housing, Infrastructure and Communities. Mr. Speaker, if the Honourable Member has qualms about the member for King's Hands, I can reassure him he is a champion for his community. He launched a petition recently to stand up to the Conservative government in Nova Scotia for changes to the agricultural sector in his community. Every time the Conservatives ask a question about the environment, it's to find out ways that they can do less. The member for Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke has suggested flooding in the Ottawa River was a result of regulations that were not in place. The member from Caribou, Prince George, has suggested climate change is not a result of industrial pollution, but of more body heat from a growing population. The member from Red Deer, Lacombe, visited school kids to say carbon dioxide was plant food. Mr. Speaker, this... The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. He's absolutely right. It is a joke. An April Fool's joke. And the joke is on Canadian taxpayers, especially Nova Scotians, who will have to pay $1,500 in higher carbon taxes after that hike goes ahead. He says that the member for King's Hance is a champion. A champion who can't even speak, who's silenced by his own... has 10 seconds left on the clock. Silence. Will the censored champion break his silence and tell us, will he vote for his constituents to spike the hike, or will he rip them off on April Fool's Day? 
The Honorable Minister for Housing, Infrastructure and Communities. Speaker, the Conservatives want to peddle false information to trick Canadians into voting for them. The reality proven, not by projections, but by real world data, is that people who live in my province receive more money every year from the rebates that they receive than the fuel charge that they pay. Everything the Conservatives do... Order. The Honourable Minister has 15 seconds left on the clock. Mr. Speaker, at every instance the Conservatives have an opportunity to speak in House, they do one of two things. Advocate to do less on the environment or to take money from families in my community. I will support neither. We will do whatever we can to put more money in the pockets of families and do the right thing for future generations. Order. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, the question was for the silent member from King's Hands. He is asked to explain how he's voting for a carbon tax of $1,500 fa per family that only pays back $963 in rebates. I asked him specifically to stand and answer, but he's been shut down and shut up by his masters in the PMO. So once again, will the chair of the Agriculture Committee and member for King's Hands stands in, uh, in today and tell us whether he will vote to spike the hike or raise the tax. Order. I invite all members. The leader has 23 seconds left on the clock. The leader knows the rules of this place and knows that this, the, for, on this side of the house, we're pleased and proud to, uh, to speak to the affordability measures and the things that we're putting in place to make life more affordable for Canadians. But while we're on this theme, I have a, I have a question for the member of the Defence Committee from Selkirk, in, Selkirk Interlake. Why did he sell out the people of Ukraine in voting against? government house leader to please have order in this house. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, the people of King's Hands, Nova Scotia, are learning they don't have a voice in Parliament because he has been silenced. The Prime Minister is terrified that he might stand up and get off script. He knows that the unanimous will of the Nova Scotia Legislature, Liberals, Conservatives and New Democrats was passed in a motion calling for all of that province's MPs to vote against the hike. So will the member for King's Hands, who is the chair of the Agriculture Committee, stand up for farmers in his riding and vote with us to spike the hike? Yes or no? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, the member for King's Pants stands up for farmers, stands up for his constituents, stands up for the people of Nova Scotia, and stands up for the people of Canada every single day. On this side of the house, we are incredibly proud to have him as our colleague. And one thing that he knows is hit, the people of King's Hands do not need cuts, 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 and that is all the Conservatives have to offer them or any single Canadian. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, the member for King's Hands is in the Witness Protection Program today. <laughs> he can't possibly stand up when his whip waves for him to sit down, which is exactly what happened a moment ago when I asked him a legitimate question as chair of the Agriculture Committee, a committee that's studying the devastating impact of the carbon tax on farmers in his riding and across the country. So for a sixth time, will he come out of the Witness Protection Program and announce whether he will vote for our motion despite the hike? Yeah.